Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Damaris, also known as Damaris Dash A Bit Weird. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Wednesday, the 27th of August, 2014, and this is episode 103. We already know the title, which we usually don't decide on until after we record, but as, as you'll find out in the TV sec- section, it's very apropos for this week's episode to be called In Which We Properly Terrified Damaris. So stay tuned for that. Um, we'd like to say a big welcome back to all our returning viewers. We love you. You rock. And a big hello to any new viewers. Thanks for checking us out. We hope you enjoy the show. Um, speaking of new viewers, um, there are some that introduced themselves this week. And so, Damaris, why don't you give them a little shout out? Okay. Bobcat Bobby, who is Bobby from Beverly Hills, Florida. Jin's mom, who is Penny from West Virginia. Fairy Dust 90, who is Brianna from Wisconsin. Kay Ray, who is Carla from Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. Ali A.H. Knits, who is Ali from Surrey, B.C., Canada. I think it's Ali. Ali, sorry. No, it's okay. We apologize if we ever mess up your names. It's not intentional. Rosie J.P.M., who is Rosie from the U.K., and is living in Copenhagen, Denmark. And um, she runs a knit cafe um, for English speakers in, um, there in Copenhagen called Copenhagen Yarn Lovers. So if you're in that area, you should check it out. I'm pretty sure they have a group on Ravelry. Dapt Spaniel, who is Davy from Scotland. Ellie Girl, who is Lori from West Fargo. Yeah. Nikki, 18229, who is Nicole from Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. So welcome to the group, everybody. We're glad you're here, and thank you for introducing yourselves. Um, so what should they do if they're not a member of the group yet? Go to uh, join our group. Yep, they should. Um, and they can find it on Ravelry under Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. And after they join the group, what should they do? Go to our introductions thread and introduce yourself. And then what will happen? You'll get a shout out on the next podcast. That's right. So, we have a lot of stuff to talk about today, um, and uh, we have a review, and we have upcoming cows, and just a ton of stuff to talk about. So, we probably should get started. Here we go. And now we're going to talk about what's on our needles. Not spindles? Because both of us are being rebels and not spinning. We will get back to it. Tour de Fleece just wore us out. Mm -hmm. So, Damaris, then, what is on your needles? Hexapuffs. Okay. So tell us about this. What if somebody doesn't know what a hexapuff is? Uh, The the pattern is the beekeeper's quilt by Tiny Alnitz. Okay. And you do it with uh, sock weight Mm -hmm. on what size needles? I'm using US 4s. US 4s, okay. So, how many have you finished this week? Four. Four? Okay. Well, why don't you show us them? You want to tell us the yarn? Uh, it's a lot of yarn. Um, you can go to my project page to look at all of it. Yeah. Well, um, the, the two stripey ones are your Mind the Gap, right? Yeah. And then those two were a mini scheme. With, are those the Luna Lovegood ones? Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then what do you have on your needle right now? I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. Was it a mini skein too? Yes. Okay. I'm not sure what it came from. Sometimes mini skeins appear and we don't remember where they came from. So, it's a pretty blue. Mm-hmm. So, how many um, hex puffs does that have you at now? 14. Okay. Um, and I think I asked you this before, but are you going to wait till the very end till you're completely done before you sew them together, or are you going to start sewing together I'm, at some point? I'm going to wait until I have all the ones I want. And Explain. I'm not sure what you mean. Till the end. Oh, till the very, very end? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to have to find another bag to put all these finished hexapuffs in. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Um, and you're still debating on what else to cast on. Yeah. Yeah, we, we tried to convince her to at uh, night the other night to cast on something else. But she is fighting to be monogamous. Maybe we'll get her to cast on some socks or something soon. You found a sweater pattern you like. Yeah. So, maybe that. 
Okay, so now let's talk about what's on my needles. I should have waited for us to start because I'm trying to get to the end of this row. So I have a bunch of super secret projects that I can't show you. Um, hold up the Doctor Who bag, Damaris. Um, so in this bag is aptly a Doctor Who project, which is the second pattern for the Doctor Who Companions uh, Sock Club that a second edition that I'm doing with Julia of Pendia's Jewels. Um, so that will be going on sale in October. Um, so I'm working on that design. And then in the pink bag right here, um, I have the new shawl pattern that I'm designing out of the uh, Ginger Hand Dyed Splendor 4 Ply in the Barbara Papa and Hot Fuzz colorways. And then I'm also doing it in Brigantia Luxury Yarn Double Knit in just some number colorways. Um, and I'm about 30% done, I believe, with those. Um, and it's gone out to testers already because uh, it's a repeatable pattern. So the plan is to release that on October 1st, on our first podcast in October, um, so that um, it can be part of our birthday sale that we're planning to do. Okay, so, and then this, this I can actually show you. This is my endless rainbow, and it's endless. Really, really endless. I don't think I'm ever going to finish. That's what it feels like. So this is the endless rainbow pattern by Martina Bem, and I'm doing it on US one and a half, two point five mil needles. The pink color is Sheet Dreamery Arendelle in the peony colorway, and then the multicolored uh, accent is Five Moons Artemis Four Ply in the Rainbow Nebula colorway. So. Um, this is how much pink I have left, and I'm trying to just go until I run out of pink. When I started this pink segment right here, I had 15 grams left, and I've been averaging toward uh, just recently, because of course you increase stitches as you go, uh, I've been averaging around 5 grams uh, a section, so I know I'll be able to finish this section and do at least one more section, but I don't think I'm going to get a third section, So, but that'll make you happy because you'll get the rest for hexapuffs. Because um, it's, uh, it, while it's four ply fingering weight, it doesn't have nylon in it, and I don't knit socks without nylon. So I am working on that, trying to get finished, because I am moti motivating, mo motivating? motivating myself with my Ginger Twist Studio Splendor, no, Sheepish Sock in the Jesu Pre colorway, which uh, is Outlander colorway. And I am planning to just do some vanilla socks in this colorway. Um, but I've told myself I can't cast them on until I finish the Endless Rainbow. So this is my motivation to cast this on. And for those of you who were wanting some of this, you know, she had sold out. Um, she just died yesterday, which if you hear that out of context makes no sense. But she just died, um, how many did she decide to do? I think 18 more skeins of it, I believe somewhere around there, and they were drying, so they should be up on the website soon. So I will do my best when she posts those to post an announcement in the group um, so that you can get yours if you want it. I, we're giving away a skein in the Outlander Cal, so um, if you're interested in that, that's a couple ways to get a hold of it. And I'm throwing all of these bags in the floor except for Damaris that has it wrapped around her finger. Uh, so that's everything that's on my needles and approaching being on my needles soon. So. I think we're ready for the next segment. And now it's time for her finished projects. Which, it's only one, and you already know what it is if you've been watching. Um, another preemie hat from my Top Down Preemie Hat pattern. This is number 22 for the year. Um, on US 6's 4 mil needles, and the purple colorway is Hayfield Bonus Chunky in the Aubergine. Aubergine. Aubergine colorway. Aubergine. <laughs> Ah, you can hear my Texas. Ah. Yeah, yeah, the aubergine. Those aubergines. Yeah, and Stylecraft Life Chunky in the Olive colorway. Um, this is a good spot to mention. We'll be have more details on this later in the year, but um, we'll be announcing our autumn cow towards the end of the podcast. But um, we're already planning ahead for our winter wonderland cow, and um, that will be in December, January, February. And we'll get you all the details, but one of our viewers contacted us um, and 
uh, shared about a charity with us that we are interested in helping support. But we just want to encourage y'all to do some charity knitting. So if in December, January, and February, if you knit a crochet spinner weave a project that you donate to charity, you'll get two entries into the giveaways for that cal instead of just one. Now you're fine to do whatever else you want to do and get your normal one entry into the cal, but if you do something for charity, you can get two entries and you can either donate it where you live or you can send it to us and we will donate it to the organization called Knit for Peace um, that's here in the UK and they accept anything that's hand knit. Um, you know, preemie hats, baby hats, sweaters, jumpers, uh, gloves, um, toys, scarves, so they accept pretty much anything. So we'll have more information on that coming up later in the year, but we just wanted to give you a heads up on that so you can start thinking about knitting for charity in December, January, and February. So that's the only thing I finished this week. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be able to show you this finish next week. So um, I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. And now it's time for my favorite part of our show. Yummies, 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 yummies. Damaris, what are yummies? Yummies are our current favorite things, things you like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. So the first thing is, I had a new pattern release this week. Um, right now it is exclusive to the Doctor Who Companions uh, Sock Club Members Edition 1, first edition. Uh, the new pattern is called Come Along Pond, and it is inspired by Amy Pond. So Damaris, why don't you hold these up and I will explain. Let's turn it this way. So, actually let's do it like this. So there is this pattern right here along the outside of the foot, and it is a cable. It's um, it's actually a combination of two cables that I have named Pandorica Cable and Manhattan Cable. And if you're a Doctor Who fan, you know that reference. Um, so it looks like two arms and their hands coming together holding hands, which I thought was apropos for Come Along Pond. You know, come along, come with me. And then the rest of the sock along the front and the side and the back are flowers. And that is because my favorite Amy-centric episode is Vincent and the Doctor. So, and they mirror each other. So, the, the cables are on the outsides. You have them the wrong way. No, I don't. This is on the outside. Oh. No, you don't. You don't have them the wrong way. I don't have them the wrong way. Um, so, um, and I love the yarn that Julia did. Here, let me just show you back here, and that way you can see the yarn really true. I love how it turned out. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then um, the treats this month for the um, for the sock club members are um, more badges. So that one is the Pandorica. This is the St. John ambulance sign because this is the uh, the 11th Doctor was the first time it was back, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then don't blink. Weeping Angel. And then we also got a stitch marker. I'm trying to get it so I can hold it, which is also the Pandorica with Hedia's Jewels logo on the back. So I am super excited about that. Um, so like I said, right now it's exclusive to club members, but in, what month is this? August? Yes. August. Mm -hmm. February. Sorry, I couldn't think of it. In February on the, I believe the 18th of February, this pattern will be out of exclusivity and so you'll be able to purchase it on Ravelry. Are you having fun? No. Do you like them? Yeah. I do too. I really like how they turned out. Um, that cable was just, those cables just, oh, I just love them. So, um, and speaking of Doctor Who, you know what? Doctor Who is back what? <gasps> with the 12th Doctor, Peter Capaldi. And we'll talk more about Doctor Who in the yummies. No, this is yummies in the TV section. <laughs> but we just want to say, yay, Doctor Who's back. Say yay. 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 Okay. So, Damaris, what did we do yesterday that was fun? We went out for coffee with our friend Syria. Yeah. So, we know Syria 
from our knitting group. Yep, our Monday night knitting group. And so we went and met her for coffee and knitting. Mm -hmm. Except for you didn't bring your knitting. Mm -hmm. But the rest of us knit. Um, um, and you had a yummy looking, um, what was it? Thing. No, that you ate. Oh, a chocolate thing. It was chocolate with chocolate chips in it. Yeah, I like chocolate. Was it good? Yeah. So, and they I had... I want it more. I want more. Yeah. They also had gluten-free treats. So, they typically have gluten-free brownies, but they were out of them. But they had these cherry kind of tarts or something. They were like little miniature pies with cherry in it, and they were so good. And they were gluten-free. Brownies. Brownies. We like brownies. I want brownies. You want brownies for your birthday? Yeah. Okay, I'll make you brownies for your birthday. Or maybe our lovely, gluten-free, amazing cook friend will make brownies for you. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to mention next that um, I can't remember who posted it on Instagram. But somebody did. Um, that there is an Outlander podcast. It's an official podcast. Uh, it's not safe for children, just like the books in the show. So, um, but what it is actually is Ronald Moore, who is the producer of Outlander. He also did Battlestar Galactica um, that was on Sci-Fi a few years ago. So he does a commentary as the show airs. It's so like, you know, on DVDs sometimes. No, no one can be bothered to wait for yeah, so he did. He does it as it airs. So I actually listened to all three episodes this morning because I listen in time and a half. No, yeah, time and a half speed. Um, so the first episode was just him, but but the second and third episodes, his wife was on there. Her name is Terry something. I don't remember her last name because um, she has a different name, last name. I think she kept her maiden name probably. Um, but she's the uh, costume designer for Outlander. So it was really interesting listening to them talk about different things about um, the costuming and the settings and the weather, how often the weather um, impacts their ability to film certain things. Um, so that's really cool. So uh, if you are watching Outlander on Stars, you might think about listening to the official Outlander podcast. So in the show notes, I'm putting a link to it. You can download it from the Stars website or you can also get it in iTunes. So I'm putting that on the show notes. So Damaris, something um, happened in your life this week. Yep. Would you like to share what is going on? I just started school this week. Oh, what grade are you in? Tenth. So for she's following still the American school system, um, just in case we do go back after three years. Um, which speaking of, I didn't even put this in the show notes, but yesterday was our one year anniversary in Scotland. So, and we love it, and we don't want to leave. We want to stay forever. Um, so for the in the UK school system, I think it would be year 10. S4. S4, I believe. So just to give you a little idea. So um, do you want to talk about anything that you're going to be studying? Normal things. You know, math and English and chemistry yeah. and history and all that stuff. Um, you're really excited for the spring term because you'll be doing mythology. mythology. So, um, and you also started back on your um, your Friday night classes. Yes, drama and musical theater. Yeah, and y'all are going to be doing a big show in November. So that's exciting. I'm excited to see you perform. It's going to be kind of like a variety show type thing because there's a bunch of different classes and they'll all be different things they're performing. So, Okay, so I just want to briefly mention health because I did uh, mention this to you all. Um, it was on the last episode. I believe it was the one before that. Um, and I know some of you aren't interested, so I'm going to be really quick. I'm just going to say that I've started on my new medication. Um, as of tomorrow, it'll be a week that I've been on it. And I am seeing a little bit of a change in a good direction. So just keep your prayers and going up for me and your thoughts and fingers crossed that this will continue to improve. And uh, that way we can add on something new when I see the nurse specialist again in a few weeks. So... Um, I got, well, you want to say first what you got? You got a thing and then I'll say it. Oh, and then you'll say it? Okay. I have a new friend 
she's on my purse and I couldn't get her off, so you're getting it on my purse. This is Princess Unikitty, and touch her nose, Damaris. She lights up her little horn and turn her head. Yeah, so you can have her this way, too. Oh, isn't she fun? I love her. You can her. send emergency signals. <laughs> okay, turn her head back. She's, uh, if you don't know Princess Unikitty, she's from the Lego movie. Isn't she fun? And there's an angry kitty one. I actually found it on Amazon. I'm thinking of having it sent to our friend who's back in the States right now visiting to have her bring back for me. Because she's so funny. I love Unikitty. She's fabulous. She's pink and she's a kitty and a unicorn. How could you not love her? And what did you get when I got Princess Unikitty? You the dark stars. Oh yeah, you're gonna put them on your ceiling? Yes. Um, and what... In you... astronomically correct fashion. Maybe. Oh. If I can find the stars that are actually above where we live. Oh, okay. So we need to do some Googling, maybe? I tried. It didn't work out so well. I couldn't get it specifically. It was just okay. a whole mess of constellations. Okay. Well, we'll see what we can do. We'll, we'll investigate a little bit. I like space and the solar system and stars. The final frontier? These are the voyages. Of the Starship Enterprise. It's continuing mission. To explore strange new worlds. To seek out new life. And to boldly go where, where no one has gone before. Um, okay, so now do we have any more yummies? No. No? Okay, so now it's time for hashtag GG K Crafty Let's try that again. Hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. So Damaris, what is GGK Crafty Pad? You take a look at our prompt list for the month, and then you take a picture. Then you post it anywhere you like. Um, and we and do what? We pick our favorites from Instagram. Yes, <laughs> and show them in the podcast and put them in the show notes every week. Um, and what's this month's theme? Celebration. Celebrate good times, come on. It's a celebration. The month's almost over. It is almost over, which Two means... Two or three more days. Um, Sunday is the last day of the month, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four more days. Four more days. Yeah, because, uh, September 1st is on a Monday. Because then my official new calendar over there starts. Oh, it's the 27th, not the 28th. Yes. Um, so yeah, celebrate. And actually, we haven't talked about this, but we'll be celebrating on next week's episode our second anniversary because it's this weekend. Two years of podcasting. Um, so, yes, so this month's theme was celebrate, ne and, um, I was going to say, that's what I was trying to remember what I was saying, um, we have September's list ready, and I've already posted it on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and on the blog, but what is our theme for next month? School. Back to school. And we know some of that, some of y'all don't have that, um, as a part of your life, you know, whether you don't have kids anymore or you're out of school or whatever, but just try to interpret the prompts however you want to. Um, you don't have to be in school or have a child in school or something to participate. So um, just figure out a way to make the prompts work for you and post. So we're going to stop now and show you to each of our photos that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. Yes, so here come the photos. So those were the photos, aren't they amazing? Yeah. We had a lot of focus photos this week, which I was, you know, I, I, the way I interpreted focus too was um, uh, focusing on a project, um, but I was hoping somebody with mad photography skills would do something with a focused or out of focus picture 
that would have been really cool looking. I tried and on it didn't I work. Uh, yeah, on iPhone, they're just like, oh, you want to take an out of focus photo? No. Yeah. No. I tried and I just couldn't make it work, so um, I went back with the other thing. The, the Instagram has a filter to make things out of focus. Yeah, to yeah, um, yeah. A certain area. A certain area. You can't do the whole photo. Well, you can you can zoom it out. And yeah. Make it all big. So anyway. Um, so now let's talk about upcoming events we attend, we'll be attending. So what about Mondays? We attend one of our local knitting groups, the Town Mass Knitting Club. Yes. We meet on Monday nights at the Safari Lounge. They have fabulous ciders. No. Damaris does not drink the cider. She drinks hot chocolate. Um, so if you're in the area or visiting in the area, we'd love for you to meet up with us. Um, link in the show notes to details. Um, in September, September the 27th, I'll be going to Yarndale, which is a fiber festival in Skipton. Um, a group of knitters from here in the Edinburgh area are taking a train down very early Saturday morning and coming back very late Saturday night to just spend the day at, in Skipton uh, at Yarndale. So if you're going to be there, um, let me know. We're planning a podcaster meetup. We still don't have a location nailed down. I'll let you know as soon as I know. But I will have uh, Geeky Girls Knit badges and business cards and a business card for my Java Pearl Design stuff with a coupon code for a discount. So if you're going to be at Yarndale, make sure and find me and ask me for all the good things, okay? All right, and then the last thing is Edinburgh Yarn Festival is coming in March 2015. You're not making different faces. Edinburgh Yarn Festival is coming in March 2015. You should go because we'll be going and it's going to be amazing. All right. I think that's everything for Yummies this week. So we should probably move on to the next segment. So Damaris, what are you reading? I finished reading Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And, and did you love it? Yes. And so we, we should watch wa a movie now? Yeah, which one? I don't know, there's a lot of them. There isn't there's one with Kira Knightley? I believe so. We'll have to look. Maybe we will watch something like that this weekend. That'd be <laughs> fun. Ooh. Um, so now what are you starting to read? The Crucible by Arthur Miller. And that's for your English lit class, right? Mm -hmm. So have you started it? The introduction. The introduction, okay. It's a long introduction. What um, other books are you going to be reading this year for your English lit class? Do you remember? Huckleberry Finn. So that's by Mark Twain. The Great Gatsby. So that's by Fitz Fitzgerald? Mm -hmm. Fitzgerald, no. No. F. 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 Scott Fitz. Fitz Fitzgerald, not Fitzsimmons. Fitz Fitzgerald. I wanted to say Fitzwilliam, but no. No. And then what, in their fourth one? Their Eyes Are Watching God. I don't know what that one is. I don't, I think I may have read part of that. I don't think I've read all of that, so. Okay, so you're starting on The Crucible. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm still reading my non-fiction fiction book. Your non-fiction book. Is, yeah. Non-fiction. No, no, no fishing. You don't read this while you're fishing. It's and there's no fishing in it. deep. That's right. Non-fiction book number 13 for this year, and it's called The Seasons on Henry's Farm, A Year of Food and Life on a Sustainable Farm by Tara Brockman, and I'm over 50% done with it now. Um, I've done, I've read, um, I think I'm into the 30s for the number of weeks, because um, she does all 52 weeks of the year, and there's been so much interesting stuff. I learned about mushrooms this week, and I learned about... Um, <laughs> I learned about chickens and ducks. I like ducks. I like the rubber. You would not want to read the section that I read because, yeah, it was talking about not fun things. And, yeah. Um, we'll move on from that. It's a good book. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I'm traumatizing Damaris other ways now, apparently. 
Um, and then I'm also reading the Kate Daniels series by Ilana Andrews, which is a husband and wife team um, writing together. I finished reading the first book, which was called Magic Bites, and now I'm reading the second book, Magic Burns. And that's everything we're reading. So let's move on to the TV. And now we're going to talk TV. So I guess I should start. I forgot to scroll the page. Um, the Hubs and I finished watching t 24 Live Another Day. What did you think? It was uber predictable. We were able to guess almost everything that was going to happen in the whole 12 episodes. I believe it was 12 episodes. Yeah. Anything else? And uh, Jack has now been taken cust into custody by Russia again. And that's how it ended. So they've left it open for another movie or season. Movie. Yeah, they've done one movie. I think it was a TV movie, but... I was like, I don't remember a movie. Yeah, I think it was a TV movie. Sure. So. Sure. Um, you want to talk about the next one? We finished re-watching season four of Stargate SG-1. And are now re-watching season five. I think we are slowly approaching that one episode. You know what I'm talking about? Which one episode? The one where Daniel. Oh, Ascends? Yeah. Because I was going to say, we've already passed Window of Opportunity. Like we talked about that one last week. That one episode. Yeah, when, you know what I mean. when Michael Shanks had a salary dispute and left the show and then eventually came back. You know what I mean. Yeah. So anything else you want to say about uh, Stargate? Okay. Um, we're also rewatching Gilmore Girls. Wait, that, oh, I was, I was like, that's not what's next. That is what's next. That is what's next. It is what's next. We are rewatching Gilmore Girls. We are towards the end of season two. I believe we have three episodes left in season two. And um, <laughs> Jess just caused the car accident that, that he was in with Rory, and she broke her wrist. And so Lorelai and Luke are fighting now. And, and Luke sent um, Jess away. <laughs> and I know what you're doing. So there's the episode, it, well, it's that same episode where, where Rory breaks her wrist, that Lorelai is picking the movie for the town movie festival, and Kirk comes to her and wants to show his short movie. And actually it has the actress that played Chloe O'Brien in 24 in it. And it is so bizarre and weird. <laughs> And Kirk breaks out into dancing, and it's just so strange. <laughs> so that's why Damaris was doing the dancing moves. It was so funny. It's hysterical. Um, and then, you want to talk about the next one? I, I don't even know. We, I'm watching, she's re-watching, mm -hmm. Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, and we finished season one today. And Lex got taken into custody. No, he... he Threw himself oh, off that's the right. building. He threw himself off the building. That's right. He was. They were but trying I to do a catch. I don't think he's dead. I don't think he. I don't think he's dead either. And they he they came in to try to arrest him during Lex and Lois's wedding. And then Clark lied to her and said he didn't love her. He had his fingers crossed. Literally, he he, he, he did her. have his fingers crossed behind his so back. What? Um. So, we'll start season two soon. Okay, and then next up is Covert Affairs. The Hubs and I are watching season five as it airs. I still jumped the shark. There's a new one on. There was a new one on last night, so we'll watch it tonight when he gets home from work. And then he and I are also watching Unforgettable season three. And even though it's a crime drama, it's kind of got this fun little element to it because she, like, each week they show her using her memory trick thing, you know, to to beat, like, three people at chess in, at once. And, you know, just three people at chess at once. Yeah. With her back turned, not looking at the board. No, that, that is just out there. I know. Hey, you know what sounds cool? Three-person chess. There's a chess board built to accommodate three people. Well, there's the one in Star Trek where it's like four levels. Oh, yeah. This can only in one way. Yes. 
Um, and then I'm also watching Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. I'm still in series one. I think I'm about halfway through series one now. Um, because I tend to watch it when I don't have any podcasts to watch or listen to. So, um, you want to talk about the next thing? Ah, we can finish rewatching all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe that we can. Because we can't watch Guardians of the Galaxy yet. Because it's still in theaters, I think. I believe so. And so, so we finished rewatching Agents of Six Shield, and I cry every time. Yeah. Mm. So, and it'll be back, I believe, in October. Mm-hmm. I think that's right. No, I we think, have a. I li- think it's. I think it's late, late September. You think? Like late, late. Okay. Late. I have a list of all of our stuff that we watch that with their premiere dates on it. Ward can get out now. Yep. He can leave forever. Yep. He can never come back. So, um, Ooh. and then we watched a couple of movies. You want to talk about those? Um, I can't see them. The Amazing Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man 2? Yes. The Andrew Garfield ones. Yes. And, Our internet's and, not behaving. I'm and, trying to get it back. Mm, mm, everything is so sad. Okay. Why? I don't know. Is there anything else you want to say about Spider-Man? Why? I don't know. Hmm. Okay, so should we move on to the next one? Because it's the one that traumatized you. So, uh, in this past week, Richard Attenborough, who was an actor and director, passed away. I believe he was like around 90, somewhere around there. But um, Damaris and I, when we were coming home from the our coffee date yesterday, we were just chit-chatting about him and... Damaris was like, we should watch Jurassic Park because he plays one of the lead roles in Jurassic Park. Now, I had seen Jurassic Park before numerous times. We used to own it. Um, Damaris had seen little clips of it at various points, but I guess I didn't realize that she had never watched the entire movie. And so she was like, oh, let's rewatch it. And so we watched it last night. And if y'all could have seen her face and her, oh my gosh, it was hysterical. It was not hysterical. We were laughing so hard at her. I was terrified. Of the dinosaurs. Did you dream about dinosaurs? No. Oh, good. I was just sure that I was going to wake up this morning and she was going to be, like, laying at the foot of my bed or something because she was had bad dreams of the dinosaurs. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's so funny. So we properly terrified Damaris. <laughs> really? Really? Oh my gosh, it was so funny. And I was like, I mean, I'm watching the movie and I'm knitting and I'm like, oh, tell me when it's over because I didn't want to see the dinosaurs that were mean. Like that one dinosaur who ate the guy. That's bad. That was really, really bad. Anything you want to say about Jurassic Park? There's a new one coming out next year with Chris Pratt, with Chris Pratt in it. And some other people. Some other people. I can't remember who. It's like Chris Pratt. He's in everything now. Uh, it's called, if they keep the same title, it's currently called Jurassic World. And it'll be the fourth movie in this series. So the, after we finished watching Jurassic Park last night, the hubs was like, so tomorrow should we watch the next one? And she's like, no, it's my bedtime. I'm going to bed. I don't want to watch any more right now. So we'll probably have to watch two and three eventually before the new one comes out next year. We don't have to watch them, do we? (laughs) No, we don't. Hello. I am Peter Capaldi. I am the 12th Doctor. Wow, your voice has changed. I know, I don't have a Scottish accent right now. I have come to tell you about the first episode of series eight of my new show. Damaris, what was it called? <laughs> <laughs> what was the episode called, Damaris? But what was the show? Doctor Who! You didn't say that, you just said, my new show. They know? They all know that we're Whovians? Deep breath. Deep breath. Take a deep breath. All right, Damaris, do you want to start us? Or is that mine? You. you Shh. Go ahead. Shh. 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 When 
Strax knocked on the TARDIS door after the dinosaur vomited out the TARDIS. And Peter answered the door and said, Shh! And it was really funny. Twelve. His name is not Peter. I'm Peter Capaldi. And I'm twelve. Uh, Shh! Okay. It was really funny. Okay, go ahead. Oh, you've got a dinosaur too! Or you just time travel. I just tried travel at it too here. He was really messed up at the beginning of the episode. Very confused still with his regeneration stuff. We love the new credits mm -hmm. a lot. A lot, a lot. Um, the turning gears on the, and the clock tower sound. Um, and I think we talked about this last week that they were inspired by a fan-made um, video. And they actually hired the fan to come help do them. I really, really like them a lot. They're really cool. Steampunkish. Alright, am I next to you? Sure. Okay, so there's the whole scene at um, Madame Vostra's house where he is still very confused and he goes ranting, ranting about this room with a bed in it and he was like, so you've got a whole room for not being awakened? Why, yes, we do. We have more than one room like that. Twelve. Okay. And it's yours. Oh, this one's mine too. Oh, why do I have all these things to say? So, um, he has this discussion with himself and with the homeless guy, right? Yeah. And the homeless guy is... Liz Slayton's... Husband. Yeah. Who played, she played Sarah Jane. Like, my, my Sarah Jane back here was named after her. Um, so that was her husband that played the homeless guy. Isn't that cool? Anyway, so, um... I'm wondering if, um, what's his name? Who? The guy that used to do Doctor Who. Russell T. Davies? Yes, Russell. I put it there, RTD. I know, but I couldn't think of what it stood for. Russell T. Davies has said that he has a solution for why P Peter was, was in Doctor Who before because he was in the episode. I learned. Oh, you did. Pompeii, but that was not the name of the episode. Fires of... Fires of Pompeii, and Karen Gillan was in that, too. Yes. Um, he was... So, Peter was in the Fires of Pompeii, um, and so I'm wondering if Russell T. Davies' solution for why is that he was so impacted by what... The Doctor was so impacted by what happened at Pompeii that he took on the face of Peter Capaldi. Maybe. Don't know. So he's... So Peter is asleep in the bed, and <laughs> just you wait, 11 is coming soon. He's asleep in the bed, and he's translating what the dinosaur is saying, and he says, and I'm alone now, alone. So sad. Poor Peter, he's feeling so alone because, because he can't remember Clara. He's so confused. He, he thinks that Strax is Clara, and Clara is Strax. He's so confused, because he's still regenerating. Okay, you're next. Okay. Planet of the Pudding Brains. Us humans, apparently, are pudding brains. And we will melt him with acid. And what was that in reference to? And we will not melt. And what else? These are attack eyebrows. Peter, what happened to your eyebrows? We may have to sew some bushy eyebrows on Peter. They're, they're, they're completely separated from my face. They probably want to see it and form their own independent state of eyebrows. Oh. I can complain about things. I can really complain about things now. Because he's Scottish. That's why. Okay, here's the next one. Oh, okay, so they're in the restaurant. This was actually, I kind of really liked the restaurant scene because you really got the banter going between Peter and Jenna. Twelve and Clara, sorry. But he asks the the thing, the guy, do you have the a children? Thing. The robot guy thingy. If they have a children's menu and it was funny. Hmm. And he said, Geronimo! Harking back. 
Two. I thought you were going to finish that sentence. You just stopped. You finish that sentence. No, you finish the sentence. You finish that sentence. Harking back to whose catchphrase was Geronimo? Eleven. Oh, Eleven. Oh. And the SS Marie Antoinette. Which was a sister ship to? The SS Madame de Pompadour. From what episode? Girl in the Fireplace. Girl in the Fireplace. Really? Really? Looks like the clockwork joys got to Marie Antoinette. Yes. Um, do you want to do the next one or me? I'll do it. I used to have a, have a lot of round things. I wonder where I put them. Yes, this was in reference to changing the TARDIS. This is now 12 has his act together and he's talking to Clara about the round things. I love the round things in the TARDIS. They're really cool. And then... Oh, the episode where... The, the episode. The, the, the part of the episode where I cried when Eleven called Clara on the phone from Trimzalore and told her that she needed to help Twelve. And she, he said to her, Goodbye, Clara. I'll miss you. And I cried. And I cried and I cried. Goodbye, Matt. We'll miss you. And then what happened? I'm not sure. I'm a hugging person now. I don't think you have a boat. Yes. You must accept hugs, Twelve. You're cool like that. Aww. I'm putting Eleven back here since he's retired now. But let me give Peter a hug, a Twelve a hug, too. Aww, we love you, Twelve. You do like hugs, don't you? You just are complaining because you're being being Scottish with your accent that I can't replicate. Now it's your turn. So, at the very end of the episode was the major confusing part. So, at the end of this episode, there is a character called Missy who is in charge of the garden that is also called Heaven. Sure. And we believe that it was the same garden that set that was used in what episode was uh, that? Well, it is the same garden set used from the one with Amy when she grew old. That one is my favorite episode. The girl who waited. Yes. Yeah, and we don't know if it means anything or if they just like to reuse their sets. Yes. And so this lady Missy says that doc the doctor is her boyfriend. And we don't know if the doctor killed, what's his name? Did we write it down? Half-Faced Man. Yeah, Half-Faced Man. We don't know if he pushed him out and he died or if he jumped or he fell or what happened. But some of the theories going around the worldwide interwebs are that Missy is an older version of Clara. That Missy is the woman from the shop who gave Clara the number to the TARDIS. And also made it where um, Clara and Twelve got together in the restaurant. There was another one. Oh, that Missy is a new version of the Master. Um, and some people think she might be connected to River somehow. So it seems like the... Oh, I've got an idea. It just popped to me right now. Okay. A younger version of, oh, what's her name? You know, Madame Kavarian. You know, because it was never revealed why Madame Kavarian was so bent on getting to the doctor. Hmm. Ha 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 ha. That's intriguing. So it looks like they'll be carrying this Missy storyline through the entire Series 8. Um, so, interesting, interesting. So, is there anything else you want to say about Doctor Who this week? No. Um, so what's the next episode? Into the Dark. And that'll be on Saturday. And then we so, because we don't have regular TV for, for us here in Scotland, so we don't watch it until Sunday. So we, we, um, make sure and avoid spoilers on the worldwide interwebs. We like, through Twitter so that we don't see any of the spoilers. So, um... All right, and then the last thing on the TV list, why did you take 12's coat off? That's not very nice. He's interesting. 
He's cold. He wants his coat on. Um, I watched Outlander episode 1.3, The Way Out, um, which is not safe for children. Um, it wasn't as good for me as the first two episodes, but I think it's because uh, episode three really gave us a lot of the backstory and information that we need for upcoming episodes. But since I had just recently read the books, I was like, I already know all this. And so I think if I hadn't read the books, it would have been better. But I'm glad I read the books so that I kind of know what's going on as well. So the next episode is episode 1.4, The Gathering, on the 30th of August. And that's all of our TV. Way to go, Peter. You did great playing your role of 12 on the Geeky Girls Knit podcast. Thanks for visiting with us. We're so glad you were one of our co-hosts. Oh, is he wanting to come knit with me? No. no. Oh, what are we doing? He's giving me a high five? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks, Peter. You were a great co-host. You wow. rock. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next segment. So what are we going to talk about now? Oh, is this, I was supposed to say yes. it. Yes. Summertime and the living is easy, Cal. This is the last week. When do they have to have their projects done? The last day of August. Which is Sunday. The... 30th. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you have a project that you've been working on for the GGK Summertime Cal, you need to get it posted by Sunday night because when I get up Monday morning, September 1st, I am closing the thread. I will lock it and then we will choose prize winners on next week's episode. So um, we have four prizes. We have two coupon codes for five fifty uh, towards pattern in my Ravelry shop, and that was donated by one of my test knitters, Christy, who is Christy Ray on Ravelry. So thank you, Christy. And we also have a prize of uh, of an up to ten dollar U.S. pattern from Ravelry, donated by Eileen, who is leaner. So thank you, Eileen. And then we also will be giving away at least one thing from our bag of prizes. We are getting close to three hundred entries. I would love to see three hundred entries. So if you're finishing up projects, get them posted. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the next segment so we can talk about the new cow. What about the people? What about what people? Oh! I'm so sorry. I forgot to let Damaris tell us who finished projects this week. I'm sorry, I was already thinking towards the next cow. Damaris, yes, please tell us who finished projects this week, because a lot of you did. Andy times two, Vivite, Crafty Nelly times three, Eleanor Gamgee times two, Evil Twin 2 times 5, mm -hmm. Happy Debs times 2, Ayana, Katie Did What, Katie Kitty J times 3, Christine times 2, mm -hmm. Leaner, Elle McCall times 5, mm -hmm. Louie Hiker, Lupin Owens Jacob, Marsha TF, Meiji times 2, Pinky Peppy times 2, and Wisconsin Netter times 2. Great job, y'all. I'm so sorry I forgot. I was just excited for the next cow. So now we really are going to move on. We're going to tell you about the next cow. So our next cow. We're really liking these seasonal cows. And so I think we're just going to continue doing them for the foreseeable future. So what is the name of our autumn cow, Damaris? The artistic autumnal cow. Because you are creating art in whatever you are creating. So, this is going to start on September the 1st, and it's going to run through November the 30th. Um, any project that you knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us is related to autumn will count. And there's always the cheater reason of you crafted it in August. In August. In autumn. Not August. <laughs> it starts September 1st, not August. So... If you've managed to make a project that you completed in August but did not start before September 1st, Please do enter it. It's funny. I'm very confused. Because August is not, is not in autumn. Okay. I'm so confused. <laughs> you could not have started the project before September 1st. Yeah. Yeah. If you understood what Damaris said, great, because I did not. I'm very confused. So uh, you cannot start it before September 1st, and you have to finish it by November 30th. Um, and you can double dip in other cows. We are totally fine with that. 
Um, every project that you finish and post will be one entry into the giveaways. You have to be a member of our Geeky Girls Knit podcast group on Ravelry to participate. And the hashtag for the artistic autumnal cal is hashtag G-G-K-A-A-K. G-G-K, Geeky Girls Knit, A-A-K, Artistic Autumnal Cal. Um, and I will be opening the threads for that um, probably Sunday. Um, and so there's an FO, going to be an FO thread for you to post your finished projects. And there will be a chatter thread as well. Um, and we will then lock the thread on December 1st. And we will choose prize winners after that. The next podcast after that. And just like any of our giveaways, you have 30 days to claim your prize if you win. All right. Anything else you want to say about the artistic autumnal cow? Nope. All right. Let's move on to the next cow. All right. And here's the third cow. This is the Outlander cow that I am doing with Jasmine and Gigi from the Knitmore Girls, Maria from Subway Knits, and Kristen from the Yarngasm podcast. So we're co-hosting this together. It's a Instagram cow, so you have to relate your projects somehow to Outlander. And um, so post your projects on Instagram with hashtag countdown to Outlander and hashtag kilt me now cow. That's in the show notes so that you can make sure you get it right. Um, there's a thread in our group if we're uh, encouraging each other and asking questions. And I'm pretty sure there's threads in the other groups as well. Um, and then prizes. Each podcaster is doing some prizes. So one of the prizes from our podcast is this beautiful skein of Ginger's hand-dyed sheepish sock in the Jesu Preet colorway, which means I am ready. Um, and it is 100 grams, 365 meters of 80% superwashed VFL and 20% nylon. But we also have a new prize, and I'm going to put pictures on the screen while I'm talking. Um, Janice, who is Whippity on Ravelry, is a pattern designer, and she has donated her pattern We Black Face Sheep, which is a cute little sheep, and her pattern Ramsey McSporin, which is um, some accessories for the sheep. Um, I know that it's, there's bagpipes. And I believe a kilt and maybe a hat. I can't remember, but you'll be seeing this in the picture because I've got the picture on the screen right now. So a big thank you to Janice for donating that. So one winner will get both of those patterns. So, um, and I still haven't decided if we're going to choose for one of them at mid-season break and the other one at the end, or we're going to do both at the end. I'm still pondering that. So, so find a pattern that is somehow related to Outlander or a colorway. Um, because I know there's a lot of yarn dyers who are doing Outlander colorways, and knit your project and enter it in the cow. All right, I think we're ready for the next segment. Um, okay, so now we are going to do our review of Pom Pom Quarterly. This is issue 10, autumn 2014. This is available, um, you can get hard copies for £9.50p. Um, um, or you can buy the digital only copy from Ravelry for eight pounds. But if you buy the hard copy, uh, you get a download code for the digital copy for free. So there are some, this is our favorite knitting magazine. We just adore it. And there's also other crafts that they include. So, so we're going to start first with the Galita, which is a, which is a shawl. And, um, Hold on, let me just get my finger back here so I can give you details as we go. This is done with, this is uh, by Nadia Kretinishin. Yes. Nishin. And it is done with four ply fingering weight yarn. You need three skeins of yarn, two of one color and one of the other, and it's knit on US 6 4 mil needles. Um, I kind of like it. I like the little pop of blue, but I don't know that I would want to wear such an open work shawl. So I don't know if I would make it just because of that, but that's just personal preference. I think it's beautiful. I love the detail color. What do you think of it? I like it. <laughs> you like it? Yes. Okay. All right, why don't you say this next one? This is in Indelian. Indelian. Mm -hmm. Bye. I can't read it. Christine. Ju I, Ju I, Jungebert, maybe? 
I have no idea. We're I, sorry. I, want, I want to make this one. Okay, so this one, and all of their stuff is done in a load of sizes. So this one has nine sizes available. Um, so this is also done with four ply yarn. Um, you need between four and five skeins, just depending on what size you do. And it's done on US 1.5, 2.5 mil needles, as well as US 4, 3.5 mil needles. Um, let me see if there's a picture that, okay, well that shows the bottom right there. So it's kind of a ribbed bottom. And it's got a gorgeous neck detail. You really like this one. This is the one we were talking about that Damaris wanted to knit earlier. There is some of the back detail. It's really pretty. What do you like about it? It just looks nice to wear. It does. It looks very nice. Okay, next up is, you got it so I can turn it? Celsi by Fiona Alice. It's a scarf. Um, get to the page. This is knit out of sport weight yarn and you would need five skeins of one color and one skein each of five other colors and this is knit on US 8 5 mil needles and US 9 5.5 mil needles. I think it's interesting but I'm not a big scarf wearer so I'm not sure that I would make it but it's got a lot of interesting little details in it um, and good charts. I'm not going to show you very much because that would give away the pattern but good charts on it um, so it's interesting and it looks pretty on this model so um, yeah. Okay, you got that one. This is a Florilegium. Okay, yeah. bye. Oh, I forgot. Joanna. Joanna. Johanna. Johanna Weinreich. Maybe. This is a crochet pattern. Um, so this is done in four ply fingering weight yarn and it uses one skein each of five colors. Um, and it's crocheted using a US C or D hook, three mil hook. Um, it's kind of a modern take on granny squares, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I don't crochet. I'm not good at crochet. So this would not be something I would ever do. But I, it's, it's unique. And it does look nice on her. I, I like that it's a modern, updated uh, version of the granny square. Next up, I kind of... I, I like this one, too. Yeah, I want to make this one, but I'm not going to wear a crop sweater. I would lengthen it. You got it? Coronis by Emily Ringelman, I think. Mm -hmm. So, this one is done in DK weight yarn, and you need anywhere from four to nine skeins of yarn, just depending on what size. And since I would be lengthening it, if I make it, I would need more to make sure I had enough because the skeins they used are just 250 meter skeins. It's done on US 5 3.75 mil needles and US 7 4.5 mil needles. Um, I, lo I love the stripes. I think it's, I love the stripe detail on it. I think it's really beautiful. Do you like that one? Yeah. Yeah. But you would, would you do it cropped or would you make it longer? Oh, I might make it cropped. You might make it cropped. I have a feeling that Jess will knit this. Um, <laughs> Jess, who owns Ginger Twist Studio, is addicted to cropped sweaters. And so I have a feeling she will knit them. Um, this is a cowl. You got it? Mm -hmm. Kalista by Sarah Hayes. So um, this one is, I believe, done in bulky weight. Yes, bulky weight yarn. It's pink. It is pink. So you need three skeins of the main color, and then you need one skein, no, two one skein of two different colors in lace weight for the embroidery detail, and it's knit on US 15 10 millimeter needles. And there it, you can see some of the detail embroidery. It's unique. I, I like the detail of it. And it would be a super fast knit because it's done on US 15s with bulky weight yarn, and it's pink. I love pink. Like you didn't know that already. So that's, it's unique. I like it. This is the next one is one I want to definitely make. I like this one too. Okay, you got the name? Yeah. Okay. When Lock by Emily Wessel. Wes Wessel? Yes. So Emily is one half of the Tin Can Knits design, um, de design um, partnership. Here's some other pictures of it. And 
it is done in her brand new yarn line called Rainbow Heirloom. 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 I'm sorry, my is brain. It heirloom. I'm sorry, my brain's not working very well today. Um, there are ten sizes of this, which is fabulous. It's done in a heavy DK slash worsted weight yarn, and you would need anywhere from three to seven skeins of your main color and one skein each of four colors uh, for the contrast. And it's done on US 6s, 4 mil needles, as well as US 10, 6 mil needles. I think this is just amazing. I love it and I would totally wear it. I want to cast it on now, but I have 37 other things I'm supposed to be knitting. Okay, you got that? Ciella by Sarah Hayes. So these are um, mitts. Now this is a multi-craftual item because you knit it with DK weight yarn. You just need one skein um, on um, US 3 3.25 mil and US 4 3.5 mil needles. But then you also need one, they're not called skeins. Um, no, they're not spool either. Uh, they're little packaging thingies. I can't think what they're called. One, two, three, four, five six um, shades of embroidery thread to embroider the detail. They're really beautiful. I probably would not wear them because I don't like um, the mitten style over the four fingers. I like to, them to be individual. But it's beautifully done and I love that it's multi -craftual. Then we have a sock pattern. We're probably going to butcher the name on this one. Arianette by Wink. Lucas? I would say so. Um, and it is done in three ply light fingering weight yarn. Um, you need one skein each of three colors, and it's knit on US two and a half three mil needles. Um, and I love, I just love the unique design on it. And they're pink too. You know that doesn't hurt things. Um, so it's a unique pattern. I like it. It would be a great way to use up some leftover sock yarn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was all of the patterns for this um, issue. There's also an article called Fingertip Travelers by Anna Maltz, where she's talking about um, being an armchair tourist and then taking it into being an armchair crafter. And um, it's just a really thought-provoking article. And then there's an article called Standing by My Shoulder by Ginny Reed. It's about exploring the 20th century Scottish traveling woman, Betsy White, and her world of oral history and facing traditions. I think that picture is gorgeous. Very beautiful. Um, and there's another picture. Um, so that one's an interesting read as well, and it gives you some further resources if you want to read more about her. And then we have the whole pattern section that we did. And then we have some tutorials. We have a wrap and turn and picking up the wrap stitches tutorial, as well as a garter tab cast on tutorial. And I just adore their tutorials. I love the hand drawn pictures. Just beautiful. There's several ads in there. And then the recipe for this issue is Spiced Apple and Bramble Cake by Rebecca Litchfield. It looks so yummy. I just want to eat it off the page. And then there's another article called Crafty What, and it is an article by Fis Fisby Casalini, and she's introducing craftivist Sarah Corbett. So she says, take activism, add craft, and subtract aggression. And um, it's about uh, mini banners and guerrilla art. Um, and so it's, it's a really interesting article. And then there's another article called The Birth of a Yarn Shop, The Beginnings of Tolt Yarn and Wool. And it's got some fabulous pictures. Oops. There's some more of the pictures. And I love this one. That's fabulous. Um, and then we've got some more ads. And then it closes with info about the designers. And there's the back cover. Here's the fur cover. This is Pom Tom Quarterly, issue 10, autumn 2014. What do you say? I love it. I love it too. Five stars. Um, get your hands on a copy. And we highly recommend it. So there's our review of Pom Pom Quarterly. 
Let's move on to the next segment. Now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, the part of our show where you ask us a question and we answer it. Yes, so Damaris, what is this week's question? This week's question comes from Grounded Stitches, who is Pam from Sacramento, California. And she says, hello, this question is for both of you. My cousin will be visiting Edinburgh, Scotland in a few weeks. She... She... You don't have to read the whole thing, but... Um, she's not... Her, the cousin is not a crafter, though she's trying to convert her, but she wants to know some suggestions for what um, she could bring back for Pam. Um, and we're answering this out of order because it was a time sensitive one, so we bumped her question up and then we'll go back to going in order again. Um, so, our main suggestion would be to check out our very favorite local yarn shop, which is Ginger Twist Studio. Jess carries her own hand dyed yarns, which are luscious and fabulous, and you should get your hands on if at all possible. But she also carries two different yarn lines that are made from 100% British wool and manufactured in Yorkshire. The first one is Briganti a luxury yarn in both the DK weight and an Aran weight. And the other one is West Yorkshire Spinners, 100% Blueface Lester in a DK weight. And it's also 100% British and spun in Yorkshire. And um, I have worked with both of those companies' yarns and love them. They are fabulous. I want to roll around in a tub filled with them because they are so squishy. Wouldn't that be fun? Squish. So squishy. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. You love to squish yarn too. Yes, but not roll around in a tub filled with it. But that would be brilliant. Um... And depending on where they are planning to travel in Scotland, almost every little town has a local yarn shop with stuff um, from that local area. Um, so if she's going to be traveling, uh, maybe connect her to Ravelry where she can look up uh, yarn shops in the different areas. Um, because there is a spot for that on Raveler where you can look at yarn shops in your own local area and areas maybe you're traveling to uh, and visiting. So we would suggest that. But definitely send her to Jess at Ginger Twist Studio. And we'll put a link to Jess's shop in the show notes so she can find out the opening hours and all that fun stuff. And tell her that tell her to tell Jess that the geeky girl sent her. Um, and Jess will take care of you and send lovely things back for you. So that is our suggestion. So thank you so much to Pam for the question. And uh, what should they do if they have a question for us? Go to our Ask the Geek Girls thread in our Ravelry group and mm -hmm. post it. That's right. Um, so I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. So we've come to the end of the show. We know this one's been a smidge longer than normal, but we had quite a bit to talk about. Um, so let's close things with a few announcements. One is that the Doctor Who Companion Sock Club, second edition that I'm doing in collaboration with Julia of Pandia's Jewels, will be going on sale in October. It will start on October the 10th at 10 a.m. Eastern time and run through October 17th or until memberships sell out. Um, the prices are, for U.S. memberships, is $135 U.S., Canadian memberships are $149 U.S., and international are $162 U.S., and the only reason for the price differences is that includes the shipping cost, and so it's obviously a little more expensive for her to ship from the U.S. to Canada and the U.S. to international. Um, for the club, you will get, it's a three-month club, so in November, December, and January, you will get a skein of yarn, as well as a sock pattern to go with that specific uh, skein of yarn, um, which each, each skein and pattern are um, inspired by a Doctor Who companion. And there will also be one goodie, one big goodie that she'll get in the three-month club. This past club, she's done three individual goodies, um, but this, as I, last I talked to her, it all worked out that she's doing one big goodie. Um, so, if you're interested in that, there's a link to it in the show notes, and make sure and set your alarm for October the 10th at 10 a.m. Eastern. 
Um, just another reminder that our friend Anna of Toil and Trouble Yarns is hosting a fiber retreat in May 2015 in New Hampshire. If you're interested in that, details are in the show notes. Uh, I'm a sponsor of that retreat, and I suggest that you go because it sounds fabulous. And if I was living close enough to do it, I would go. Um, we are Amazon affiliates, so the links in our show notes um, connect you to Amazon where you can purchase uh, items for yourself. Um and we get a little bit of money back, which just helps with the shipping of prizes and purchase of prices and uh, having badges printed and things like that. So if you need to shop on Amazon, please go to our website and click through um, one of the links in our show notes to shop so that we can get a little bit back. And we had quite a few things purchased in this past week. So we want to say thank you to those of you who are clicking through our link to shop on Amazon. I think that's all the announcements. So, so um, Damaris, why don't you tell them where to find us online? You can find us at geekygirlsknit.blogspot.com. There are their links to everywhere else we are online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Yes. So until next week, we'll say goodbye. We hope you have a lovely rest of your week. Happy knitting, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.